My name is Melanie Chu and I'm Director of Fundraising for East Anglia's Children's Hospices. Um, together with BBC Radio Suffolk, a couple of years ago, we ran the Treehouse Appeal to build a new children's hospice in Ipswich, serving children and families throughout Suffolk. And BBC Radio Suffolk have asked me to give you a little flavour of our experience of working with them on a charity appeal. So here goes, three key points for you to, um, to hear from me. Hope this is useful, chaps. The first one is really get ready your stories and your news before you launch the appeal. What you need to have is very different voices from different people involved in your charity prepared to speak on the radio. For example, it may be service users themselves, family members of service users. For me, it was involving our nursing and care staff, might be your frontline workers or your volunteers. You need as many different voices and different people as possible to come forward and tell their story. Create milestones as part of those stories uh, and news stories. Things like my appeal was for £3 million to build the new hospice. So, of course, we celebrated the first quarter of a million, half a million, first million pounds. Yours might be something else. It might be uh, creating a new bus project where you've got your first couple of drivers or so on. But create those landmark milestones throughout your campaign. And lastly, uh, on this slide, make sure that you use your supporters' news to generate more content. So whatever your supporters are telling you they're doing to raise funds or get involved, make sure you share that with the radio station because you will get even more interest that way. My second point I'd like to make is really, really, you cannot prepare enough your activities and your events beforehand. Have that event timetable completely drawn up. I thought I'd got a good enough event timetable but I hadn't and me and my team were scrabbling to produce and prepare new events as the event as the year went on. Things like what third party events can you piggyback on that are already out there in your area. Make sure you've also got event proposals to pass on to the listeners so that your listeners can take those ideas on board and hold them themselves. For example we put together a very simple afternoon tea party idea that went ballistic. It went, we could not believe the amount of supporters who wanted to hold their own strawberry or afternoon teas during the summer months. Just, so just prepare something like leaflet, invitations and so on, a few materials for them. And volunteers, you will get lots and lots of offers of support of volunteers, so you need to be ready to have some projects and some ideas for those volunteers to take on board. Lastly, plan your audience participation. You, your prior Prioritise what audiences you want. You won't always get them right, we certainly didn't, but we, we uh, drilled them down to about two or three key audiences we wanted to work with. And my last point that you so need to have prepared is your resources. Um, be prepared for, for an overwhelming surge of support from your radio listeners. For example, to run my appeal team, I had a team of three ready to go. During the appeal year, we had to increase that to six, simply because of the overwhelming amount of support that was coming our way. Have all of your appeal materials ready to go before you launch. Of course, you'll have your appeal brochure, but you might need to stock up on more collecting boxes or collecting tins or all of balloons and so on, all of your materials. Make sure you've got them ready. Your reply coupons, your website design, have all of that ready to go. Your Facebook and Twitter accounts will explode, so make sure you've got people to manage those before you go live. Um, lastly, you're going to need resources to cope with requests from supporters from across the whole of your geographical patch. Uh, things like, for me, the, the team were based down in Ipswich in Suffolk, but we had supporters, say, up in Lowestoft on the coast wanting collecting boxes or banners or some such that you can't necessarily put in the post. So how are you going to communicate with and uh, support those people too? Lastly, you will get lots and lots of offers of volunteers, which are a fab resource to have. Just make sure that you have the ability to manage those supporters as well. Hope that's been useful advice. Best of luck, chaps.